Hey there, I hope you are doing good. Welcome to another video. Today we are going to solve a complex JavaScript interview question which requires handling asynchronous operations that was asked in Meta or Facebook's front end interview. As you can see, this question was asked on Jan. 2024 so it's been quite old but this is a relevant question um, and alternative of this or a variation of this was asked in uber's interview so process callbacks implement process callbacks this was asked in meta and then there is an alternative for this process async callbacks queue part 2 which was asked in uber's ht3 interview so these are related questions solving them makes you prepare better for your front end interviews especially for the higher levels where if you are out of your practice of giving the interviews so if you are preparing for interviews do check out my course once enrolled you get lifetime access to this i continually add questions asked in the different interviews so you can check this out so coming back to the question let's go to the lead code and read the problem statement so that we can see how we can solve this so we have to implement an engine that process async callbacks using javascript your task is to provide implementation of the class q callbacks to meet all the condition you should provide the implementation of constructor and process methods do not change the name of these methods the constructor method should receive an optional string the value of the string will be responsible for the order of the execution in which the callbacks will be responsible for the order in which the callbacks stored in the queue are processed the non empty value it receives in the string is lifo the default order of the queue will be fifo so the constructor will receive one argument and that is will be deciding the order of the execution of the queue the default value will be fifo and in case it is receiving an argument that argument can only be lifo that will decide the order and then the process should receive a single async function that should executes by following algorithm described below if there is currently no async function being executed by the class the received callback method should be executed immediately if there is currently only one async function being executed the callback method should be executed immediately as well which means we can execute two operations at a time if there are two async functions currently being executed the callback method should be put in the queue so if there are two actions continuously happening and if you are asking for a third action that third action should be queued after one of the currently executed async action is finished when there are no arguments passed to the constructor so this is again the order only in the fifo order so if the order is fifo and one of the action has completed execution then we should get the next callback from the queue in the order specified so when the argument passed to constructor is lifo then we should get in the lifo order so it's basically in the order in which you will get the value from the queue to process after one execution is finished then only you go to the next execution so executions happens in sync initially two executions can happen if there are more than two executions the remaining should be queued if there are more than six callbacks in the queue discard any extra callback so we can keep only six callbacks at any given time in the queue and if there are more than three callbacks in the queue follow fifo if no argument is passed to the constructor so this last line does not implies because anyway the default value of the order is fifo only if there is no argument passed if the argument is passed it is lifo so follow fifo if no argument is passed to the constructor and if there are more than three callbacks in the queue does not make sense um, because if the value is passed it will be lifo if nothing is passed it will be lifo so the order will maintain itself so we don't have to worry about the last point all other will be seeing how we can implement this algorithm step by step so reading this 
clarifies many things and if you follow this thoroughly you can implement the problem so i have read the problem statements let me close this sidebar so that we can get extra area let me also close this description so that we get the coding area and let me expand this here we'll see the output in the console log in the script we'll write our code so let me clear this and then let's write our code so we'll have to create a constructor method that will be initialized taking the order as input so it, the default is fifo and if it receives an order argument it will be lifo so punch few callbacks and then i'm creating a constructor function over here you can create a class as well both work same only so the order will be defining the default order is fifo now inside this i'm going to create three variables to track the order to store the queues callback queues and to track the number of ongoing actions concurrently and then we'll have two methods one method is process and second method will be execute next so process will process the current callback and after that the execute next will handle the logic of taking the value from the queue and processing the next value of the callback in the queue so we'll have two methods so this dot order equals to order whatever order you take as input this dot callbacks queue will be an array we'll be using array as a queue javascript is a flexible language and then this dot ongoing execution zero initially there is nothing happening then we'll define two methods one will be private so our const execute next method will be a private method we don't want to ex expose this that's what the requirement is in the problem statement we only want to expose the process method so this dot process and then this will take the callback as input and it will do the processing so the first condition is if there are less than two ongoing operations then we can execute the callback immediately so if this dot ongoing execution is less than two then first we'll increment the count of the execution second we'll take the callback so this callback will be a function that will return a promise and then then whatever value it returns we'll just print it so that we are aware that we are you know this promise has executed or this async operation or this async callback has completed and here we'll have a finally block so i'm not adding a catch block assuming that the async operation will always be resolved or successful it will never throw error but you can also add a catch block to listen to the errors if in case that's the requirement in the problem statement otherwise we just execute and listen to whatever output this async function gives and then we have a finally block and in the finally block once the operation is completed what we do is we reduce the count of ongoing execution because the operation is completed we track it down and then we say execute next simple so this is the case when there are less than two executions happening at a time else what we have to do is we have to add the callbacks to the queue but that too when the size of the queue is less than six so we cannot store more than six queues or callbacks in the queues sorry so if we start callback queue dot length is less than six then only this dot callback queue dot push and callback so we have to store that this is the process method now coming to the execute method so execute next this will bring the next callback from the queue depending upon the order that we have but we have to make sure that the execution starts 
if there are less than two ongoing executions. So we'll add a precautionary check over here. One, if there is element in the queue. So if this dot callback queue dot length is greater than zero and this dot ongoing execution is less than two. So if the queue has more callbacks or if the ongoing execution is less than two, then what we do is we get the next callbacks. So next callback and that will be depending upon the order. So if the order is LIFO, so we get the last added value from the queue. And if it is FIFO, then we get the first added value from the queue. So this dot callback queue dot shift. Because JavaScript's array are flexible, we have methods such as pop and shift. Pop returns us the last added entry in the array and shift returns the first entry or the value at the 0th index. So you can use that and that too depending upon the order. And after this, we recursively call the function this dot process and to that we pass the callback. So this is how you can implement the callback engine and now let's test this so we'll create a dummy api so let dummy api or callback whatever you call this this will take an index index is basically a random number and then this will return a function callback function that function will return a new promise so return new promise that will either resolve or reject and then we are going to set timeout we are going to resolve this promise with index into thousand and here in the set timeout we are going to resolve with the index value so that it is printed in the callback then method over here so we are aware that which value is executed and now let's create the callback queue so const async callbacks and here new queue callbacks because we are not passing the argument on the constructor the default order will be fifo now let's pass a single callback dot process and do this we'll pass dummy api one two three four and five and now let's run this so see one and two are printed and then the next execution goes to three then next execution goes to four and then next execution goes to five so our implementation is working fine now let's add more than six queues after the first two because the first two will be invoked immediately and then it can only hold six queues at a time so there are three this let me add four more to see what happens so we got 4 to 5 6 7 8 9 10 and then 11 and now let's run this so 1 2 both are executed immediately then 3 after 3 4 will be there after 4 seconds 5 will come so only when 4 is resolved 5 will come after 5 it will go to 6 after 6 it will go to 7 after seven it will take seven seconds once it is completed then it will go to eight so after eight they won't go beyond that because after first two we can only store six in the queue so three four five six seven eight we cannot store more than that that's why we are only printing till eight and it has discarded nine ten and eleven now let's change the order and see what happens so we are executing in p4 
and let's now do leaf o so in the leaf o one and two should execute as it is but the next should be in executed in the reverse order so let's see let's run this then one two after this seven is executed then eight so see this disparency is because the way the value is added to the queue here we are adding it as it is one after the another but here the execution takes place only after the previous is done so that's why you see this disparency in the leaf order depending upon how it is added to the queue but if you check the next callback the execution is working fine another way to cross check this is we remove this function from the dummy api and we just return the promise resolve promise so let me remove this function from here and then this becomes a promise array rather than callbacks and then we can see what's the execution order is it same or not so one two and you'll see some disparities again over here in the leaf o depending upon how it is added so seven six five four three and eight and it has only six inputs so that's how the execution happens and if i remove this and we test it again for the fifo it should go in the normal flow two three four five six seven and eight so this is working fine i hope you have learned something new today thank you for your time